Hi, this is Matt Baker. Previously on this channel, I've done several videos reviewing DNA tests. To date, I've personally tested through 10 different companies and uploaded my data to an additional five more. But here's the thing. I'm a white guy with almost 100% European ancestry. We know that DNA companies are very good at dealing with European DNA. But what if you're African American? Is a DNA test still worth it? And if so, which one is best? Well, to answer this question, I decided to team up with fellow YouTuber Jabari Walker from the African History Channel From Nothing. He agreed to try out four tests and to upload his data to a fifth. So, in this video, we'll be comparing five different companies from the perspective of their African results. The testing companies we'll be looking at are Ancestry, MyHeritage, Family Tree DNA, Living DNA, and one that caters specifically to those with African heritage, African Ancestry. Okay, let's now return to the question of which DNA test is best for African Americans. The first thing you need to know is that there are three different types of DNA that testing companies can analyze. These are autosomal, mitochondrial, and Y chromosome. Let's start with autosomal. This is the kind of DNA that most people think of when they hear the word DNA. Every person gets approximately 50% of their autosomal DNA from their biological father and 50% from their biological mother. This in turn means that each person carries approximately 25% of the DNA from each grandparent, 12% from each great-grandparent, and 6% from each great-great-grandparent. So let's say that one of your great-great-grandparents was white and the rest were black. If you took an autosomal DNA test, you'd probably get results saying that about 94% of your DNA comes from Africa and about 6% comes from Europe. However, a good autosomal DNA test will also be able to break down that 94% African DNA into some more specific regions. This is particularly useful considering that most African Americans are American descendants of slavery and therefore don't know exactly where in Africa their ancestors came from. Most people in North America, whether they're black or white, are a mix of many different ethnicities. However, prior to DNA testing, it was usually only those with European ancestry that had the privilege of knowing their exact breakdown in detail. For example, long before DNA testing was a thing, I knew that most of my ancestors came from either Germany, Great Britain, or Ireland. However, my childhood best friend, who is black, only knew that most of his ancestors probably came from Africa. This all changed when autosomal DNA tests became widely available. Nowadays, African Americans can get a breakdown of where in Africa their ancestors likely came from. However, in most cases, there still exists an inequality when it comes to the results. Most DNA companies still divide European ancestry into more categories than African ancestry. So one of the main goals of this video is to find out which company does the best job at breaking down African ancestry into as many different regions as possible. Let's start with Ancestry.com, as that's the first company that Jabari tested with back in 2017. He's done several videos discussing his results on his own channel, so I'll leave links to those in the description. Basically, Ancestry breaks down Sub-Saharan Africa into 14 regions. So according to Jabari's results, most of his DNA comes from the west coast of Africa, with his top three results being 22% from Nigeria, another 22% from Cameroon, Congo, and the western Bantu peoples, and 16% coming from Mali. Now, one thing you'll notice about these categories is that they are mostly based on the names of modern countries rather than on distinct ethnic groups, with the exception of the Bantu. I find this somewhat disappointing because the borders of African countries today are actually somewhat arbitrary, being that they were based more on colonial history rather than on real-life cultural or ethno-linguistic divisions. So take Nigeria, for example. Nigeria has hundreds of distinct ethnic groups, with the main ones being the Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, and Fulani. 
So from these DNA results, Jabari is able to know that some of his ancestors came from what is today Nigeria, but not whether those ancestors were primarily Hausa or Yoruba or something else. On the positive side, though, one thing Ancestry.com is really good at is tracing one's ancestors' journeys once they hit North America. So, in addition to the 14 regions in Africa, Ancestry is also able to distinguish between 96 different African diaspora communities in North America. So, although Jabari currently lives in Ohio, he was able to discover through DNA where it was in the South that his ancestors came from. They also provide you with relative matches, if you choose to opt in for that, and happen to have the largest database of American users. So, if you're working on building your family tree, this can be super useful. Anyway, here's what Jabari thought of his results. It doesn't surprise me at all, really, because here in America, we are taught that black people are African Americans, which is a misnomer. Africa is an entire continent. The overwhelming majority of black Americans or black diaspora as a whole descend from West Africa and Central Africa specifically. All too often, many black people will look to places like South Africa or North Africa for connections to our ancestors, despite the fact that these are completely different regions of Africa that, than what we hail from. However, what I did find interesting was the specific regions that were listed as it narrows down where exactly in West Africa that I can trace my ancestry. Or, as my motto goes, we don't come from nothing. Okay, so I'm going to fill in this summary chart as we go along. The Ancestry.com test costs around 100 US dollars. Although, keep in mind that for most of these tests, you can just wait until they have a sale and get a much better price. I'll also add that Ancestry only gives autosomal results, that they provide relative matches, and that they break Africa into 14 regions. All right, next up is my heritage. And a disclaimer, my heritage has sponsored some past videos of mine, although they are not sponsoring this one. Honestly, though, my heritage is pretty similar to Ancestry.com, with one of the few differences being that they are slightly cheaper, coming in at around $80. They also use the cheek swab method, as opposed to the slightly more difficult spit in the tube method. So if that's a big deal to you, that's something to consider. Like Ancestry, you only get autosomal results, and you get relative matches as well. They also only divide Sub-Saharan Africa into eight regions, so that's not as good as Ancestry either. However, like Ancestry, you do get around 100 diaspora regions on top of that. And according to the genealogist Jarrett Ross, MyHeritage has the best tools out of these five companies when it comes to doing genetic genealogy. Finally, one other thing about MyHeritage that they are particularly good at is recognizing Jewish DNA, including DNA from the Ethiopian Jewish community, as well as Sephardic DNA from North Africa. So if you're interested to know if you have any potential Jewish ancestors, MyHeritage is definitely the way to go. Let's now take a look at Jabari's MyHeritage results. Once again, his Nigerian DNA stands out, but this time they estimate the total to be much higher, at 54%. This could simply be because they divided things into fewer regions, so what was categorized as Benin or Ghana on Ancestry got limped in as Nigeria on MyHeritage. However, note that MyHeritage also found 8% Kenyan, which didn't show up on Ancestry at all, which just goes to show that predicting ethnicity percentages from DNA is not an exact science. And look at that. MyHeritage was also able to find a tiny piece of Ashkenazi Jewish DNA as well. I asked Jabari what he thought of the fact that sites like Ancestry and MyHeritage list African results using modern country names as opposed to using specific ethnic groupings. Here's what he had to say. As Matt mentioned, nearly all African countries are modern constructs, a direct product of European colonial borders that totally ignored the indigenous borders that were already carved out by African kingdoms prior to the 20th century. However, I do think they can provide a rough system of categorization since there really is no other system in place due to the immense amount of genetic diversity in these regions. Additionally, many of these, these companies will group numerous modern countries into a single category. For example, Senegal and Gambia are put into the same category despite being two totally different countries, 
because the people share similar genetic, ethnic makeups, and shared histories. The Wolof being one of the major ethnic groups in this region, for example. Ivory Coast and Ghana is another example of this, and as the Akan are the major ethnic group in both of these countries, and they form the Ashanti Kingdom, which used to control territory within the borders of the modern countries as well. Okay, before I move on, one last thing I want to note about my heritage is that if you've already tested your DNA via Ancestry or 23andMe, you can upload your results to my heritage and get their breakdown for free. However, you cannot do the reverse. So, for example, if you test via MyHeritage, you cannot upload your results to Ancestry. Okay, next up is Family Tree DNA. And it's at this point that I need to introduce you to the other two types of DNA, mitochondrial and Y chromosome. Whereas your autosomal DNA is found in the nucleus of every cell in your body and is inherited from both your mother and your father, your mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, is only found in your mitochondria, that little structure that is famously known as the powerhouse of the cell. And the neat thing about the DNA found in your mitochondria is that generally speaking, it comes 100% from your mother. So basically, your mtDNA is identical to your mother's, which is identical to your maternal grandmother's and her mother's and so on. This is important because major mutations in mtDNA only occur once every few thousand years, and therefore your mtDNA can give you more information about your deeper ancestry than autosomal DNA can, at least along your female-only line. Basically, we can divide all of humanity into various matrilineal groups, called MT haplogroups. And therefore, an mtDNA test can tell you which one of these MT haplogroups you belong to. In a similar manner, if you were born as a biological male, you have a Y chromosome, which you inherited directly from your biological father, which he inherited directly from his biological father, and so on. Like mtDNA, mutations in Y-DNA occur very rarely, and therefore we can also divide humanity into various patrilineal groups called Y haplogroups. And a Y chromosome test can tell you which one of these Y haplogroups you belong to. Now, of course, if you were born as a biological female, you won't have a Y chromosome, and therefore you won't be able to do a Y chromosome test. If you want that information, you'll have to get your brother, father, or paternal uncle to do the test for you. Now, I bring all of this up because family tree DNA specializes in mtDNA and yDNA, in addition to the more standard autosomal DNA. So it's $80 for autosomal, which gives you your basic ancestry breakdown and relative matches, but it's an extra $160 for your MT results and an extra $120 for your Y results. Their autosomal results are pretty similar to Ancestry and MyHeritage, with Africa being divided into 19 regions. So here's what Jabari's results looked like. Again, he's mostly getting Nigeria and other West African countries at the top. But let's take a closer look at his MT and Y results, because that's where family tree DNA really stands out. So according to family tree DNA, Jabari belongs to the MT haplogroup L1. L1, like L0, L2, and L3, is associated with Africa, and is therefore one of the oldest haplogroups on the planet. The humans who left Africa around 60,000 years ago belonged to L3, which then split into M and N. But those whose ancestors remained in Africa usually belonged to either L1 or L2, with L1 being more associated with West Africa and L2 being more associated with the Bantu peoples from South and Central Africa. In terms of Y-DNA, Jabari belongs to haplogroup EM2, which once again is strongly associated with West Africa. So this means that both his female-only line and his male-only line can be traced back to West Africa, which fits with what we know from his autosomal results. Now, I must admit, most of the MT and Y stuff on family tree DNA is a bit over my head, so I'd really only recommend it for those who are more advanced when it comes to doing genetic genealogy. However, if you do know what you're doing, family tree DNA offers a lot of information, including direct MT and Y relative matches.
Okay, next up is living DNA, which costs $100 and uses the swab method. I normally wouldn't recommend living DNA to North Americans because they are a British company that mostly focuses on breaking down British DNA in more detail and connecting you with British relatives. However, in 2020, Living DNA released a massive update to their ancestry report that included dividing Sub Saharan Africa into a whopping 62 different regions. This is three times as many as the other sites. And unlike the others, Living DNA uses the names of specific ethnic groups instead of country names. So when we look at Jabori's results, we see Esan and Yoruba at the top, coming in at 31 and 14 percent. They are both ethnic groups from Nigeria, but now instead of just getting Nigeria as the top result, he gets something more specific. It also says he has around 12 percent Mandinka and 10 percent Mende. The Mandinka being the descendants of the Mali Empire, and the Mende being an ethnic group mostly from Sierra Leone. So to me, this seems much more precise and useful than simply being given modern country names. I honestly know very little about the Asan. I've only seen brief mentions of them when researching for the Benin Kingdom, which is actually one of my favorite African civilizations, so that's pretty cool. Apparently, they were closely related to the Edo, or the founders of the Benin Kingdom. So I can't really say I'm either surprised or not because up to this point, I really only had broad categories to narrow down my, my ancestry. So finding out one refined result incites a bit more interest than surprise, if I'm being honest. What I can say, though, is that I'm not surprised that was an ethnic group located in Nigeria, as I've often had Africans, African viewers and peers alike tell me that I look Nigerian or specifically Igbo. And the Igbo people are pretty close to the Asan geographically and likely genetically. Now, one other thing to mention about living DNA. Like with my heritage, if you've already tested through another company, you can upload your DNA file to living DNA to get their results as well. However, in this case, you have to pay $25, which for African Americans might be worth it, considering that they do a much better job at breaking down African DNA than the other companies. Okay, we're now to our final company, African Ancestry. This one stands out because A, it's the only one designed specifically for African Americans, and B, the results you get are quite a bit different. Unlike the other tests, they don't give you autosomal results. So no breakdown of your overall ethnicity percentages and no relative matches. African Ancestry only looks at your mtDNA and your yDNA and they're quite expensive, $300 for each test. However, according to the company, they compare your DNA to a much larger database of indigenous African DNA samples as compared to the other companies. So instead of just giving you a haplogroup letter like L1 or EM2, they instead give you the exact ethnic group that your matrilineal and or patrilineal ancestors came from. So for Jabari, his mother's 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 etc. etc. mother's mother was a Takar woman, the Takar being a people group from what is today Cameroon. On the other side, Jabari's father's father's father etc. was a Yoruba man, the Yoruba, as I mentioned earlier, being one of the main ethnic groups from Nigeria. Now let me tell you the good and the bad about African ancestry. The good is that they've spent the time to build up the largest data set of African DNA. So that's really good. The downside is that they only compare a few tiny snippets of your DNA to that big database in order to get your result. In fact, they use far fewer snippets than all the other companies we've looked at. So some genealogists that I've talked to have some concerns about their accuracy. In Jabari's case, his results do seem to make sense. We know from the four other tests that most of his DNA comes from West Africa, and African ancestry linked him to two West African groups. Okay, so let me give you my final recommendation. What I would do is test through Ancestry.com because they've got the largest database of users and a very easy to use interface. However, I'd then take my results and upload them to both MyHeritage and LivingDNA. My Heritage because it's free and it's got some great tools. 
living DNA because although it costs an extra $25, it gives you the best breakdown of African DNA available using ethnic groups instead of just country names. Anyway, if you're an African American and you've already tested your DNA, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave a comment so that others can hear your opinion as well. And finally, I'd like to now direct you to a channel called Genie Vlogger, hosted by the genealogist Jarrett Ross. He's been digging into Jabari's family tree and has posted his initial findings in the video, which I'll link to on screen right now. The best thing about it is that he shares his methodology. So if you're interested to get some tips on how best to do African American genealogy, you'll definitely want to check it out. Thanks for watching.